different broadcast where we will be analyzing the French President Macron apology to Africa and to the nations of the world that the French people colonized. And then we are going to use that particular apology and compare to what the British and the royal family have done to Africa and to the Biafra people especially. We are going to also compare and not just compare but at the same time make a demand that the Biafra people don't need apology but we need a referendum and we need a freedom. We need freedom from the modern slavery and modern colonization happening in Nigeria in the name of amalgamation of 1914 which is still binding us and has subjugated us to slavery to modern slavery today the world and the modern world is continued continue to evolve and we are in civilization where we should be living equally like every other person in a civil in civilized world our freedom is all we want so we can have the opportunity to develop ourselves to decide and make decisions for ourselves our future for our children and secure our land so that those who wish to invest and benefit from the what nature has offered us will have the opportunity to come to Biafra land and leave. It is very imperative because we are entering in a very dangerous stage globally. And like I normally say, Israel is battling its own enemy from the time immemorial. In order to stop the upsurge of terrorism in Africa, then Biafra need to get freedom and become an independent state. In order to stop the danger that will befall the West, Biafra need to become an independent state. In order to stop the threat that will come to America in the nearest future, Biafra need to become an independent state. If you do not support Biafra, you will be overrun by the Islamic State in the nearest future. Those of you who feel that Biafrans are fighting for resource control, we are not interested in the resource. In fact, we will be ready to give out and give away our, some of our natural resources for those who may wish to collaborate and help Biafra out of this predicament. So we are not hoping on natural resources. We are going to have a brain-based economy. And those of you who think that our interest is in oil, we are not interested in oil. We are ready to give you oil and give us freedom. And I want everybody to understand that the mistake of the past, of our past heroes, cannot repeat itself again. We've learned our lesson and we are bettering this particular liberation of Biafra in 21st century. All right, without wasting any time, I want to appreciate those who have taken a very courageous step to identify with Biafra Republic government in exile. I want to appreciate those of you who are very courageous to have come to identify with the Biafra Republic government in exile, especially those big names in the United States. I want to appreciate you. I want you to understand that Biafra people can never disappoint you. We have almost 5 million people in the United States. And we will keep to our word. So if you are making friends with Biafra today, be rest assured we will never disappoint you. It is all about interest. Our interest is only and only one thing. That you support the liberation and the freedom of Biafra people. 
it is not too much to ask. Making reference, reading what uh, the uh, President of the European Commission said today, for those who are very hungry for freedom, they will be very, very strong and can do anything to get freedom. Biafra people are demonstrating that particular adage today. And we continue to demonstrate it. We are seeking for the opportunity to practice a true democracy where people's voice can be heard, where opinion matters. A country that will respect human rights, the right to life, the right to individual, for individual to gather, right of association, and religious freedom. This is all we want. A country that the citizens will be given equal opportunity. Country where the government will make sure there is a conducive environment for our children to go to school. A country where there is going to be a social welfare. A country where security will be one of the biggest priority of the government. The welfare of the people and the aged and the old and the elderly people. This is what we want, and that is not attainable in Nigeria. Nigeria is a country designed to fail and has failed. Nigeria now, as it is going today, is diving and nose diving into the Islamic State like we see in Afghanistan. We do not want to sit back and watch our land, watch our women and children getting killed every day and its only end on writing a statement or condemning the act activities or atrocities of the Nigeria state, Nigeria military and police. We are not going to continue to write and condemn the killing of our people. We are retaliating and we are defending ourselves and we will soon activate a different self-defense mechanism. Because we are told that the, first, the best self-defense is to attack. So we will not allow anybody to stay in our land and unleash mayhem and terror on our people, our women and children. And you expect us to, after that, to write to the United Nations and just write a statement and nobody talks and said anything against it. All right. I want everybody to understand that we have gone far in this liberation of Biafra. And the Biafra Republic government in exile is taking a very bold step, making tremendous sources breaking truths and breaking many doors in global level and we must understand that the fight we are fighting today is a fight to finish having said that we now go straight to the analysis of the day Dear distinguished delegates, I stand before you today, April 30th, 2023, as the President of the French Republic, to express my deepest apologies to the African nations and peoples who were affected by France's colonial past. We recognize the harm and damage caused by our actions, and we are committed to making amends for the wrongs committed during that period. To the people of Algeria, I apologize for the harm caused by our colonization. We acknowledge the historical injustices committed during that period, as well as the pain and trauma that we continue to cause. We pledge to work towards healing and reconciliation with the Algerian people, and to foster a new relationship based on mutual respect and understanding. To the people of Benin, we deeply regret the harm caused by France's abhorrent actions. We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the deep scars left by colonialism. I want you to understand the apology the French president is being rendered here. They have done, the British have done worse than the French. But here, the French president is seen apologizing at the UN General Assembly 
to Nigerian neighboring countries that they have colonized. Today, those countries are not actually looking for independence. Not like Nigeria. The question you should be asking yourself, why the French president was issuing this statement and apology at the United Nations General Assembly or Security Council, as the case may be, in April, the British representatives were there present. They listened to Macron and they all pretended they never knew Africa existed. But we, you know one thing, like we have said before, when we read to the King Charles Todd, we told him we are not interested in apology. We are only interested in our freedom. The slavery trade or the slave trade that led to the amalgamation of Nigeria in 1914 is all we seek the dissolution. For everyone to go their separate ways and so we can have lasting peace in that region. So I want you today to ask yourself, where is the United Kingdom in all this apology? We apologize for the damage done and commit to working towards a new relationship with the people of Benin based on absolute respect. We apologize to the people of Benin Republic. Benin Republic is Cotonou, is just neighboring country to Nigeria. The French government is apologizing to them and they are pledging to better their relationship in the future. Ask yourself, all these fat stomach and big stomach men who gathers in Abuja and call themselves politicians in Nigeria, what impact have they done to either impact or to make the, the United Kingdom interest to begin to think towards humanity? To begin to realize that we cannot continue to live under modern slavery in Nigeria. To continue to understand that Biafra people has potential to overtake many countries of this world. But then we are subjugated to this particular slavery and never do well union where Biafra will continue to pay the biggest price for one Nigeria. And that's why some of us today, the new generation of Biafra people, are taking it upon ourselves to fight till the end. And we are going to leave no stone unturned in the quest for Biafra liberation. That's what we are doing, what we are doing today. To the people of Burkina Faso, we apologize for the harm caused by France's repugnant colonization. To the people of other Africa countries like you hear, Kodo Avri, they apologize for what France has done to them. Where is Britain in all this? We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the deep... They, are, they acknowledge the exploitation of their resources and culture. Where is the British government in this? As I'm talking to you today, the British government continue to exploit Biafra oil. They continue to exploit Nigeria oil. They continue to exploit Nigeria natural resources. They continue to exploit resources in Biafra land. While other European countries are apologizing for the evil they committed against Africa and against other countries, United Kingdom want us to go into war for our own freedom before they can start to do the needful. Before they can rise up to put pressure on the government of Fulani that they handed power over to in 1914 for us to have our freedom, self-determination, which is enshrined in all international instrument. If it is not in Nigeria constitution, it is in the Africa Charter of Human Rights. It is in the UN Charter, it is all the international instrument which Nigeria is signatory to. And for Nigeria being signatory to this international instrument that recognizes the right to self-determination 
it mustn't be under the national law for them to organize a referendum. For those who claim that you don't have a referendum in Nigeria constitution, you must go to national assembly and put it in Nigeria law. It's a lie. For the fact that OAU or AU charter has that particular referendum enshrined in it, that's enough. But, you know, some of you continue to deceive yourself and lie to yourself in the name of going to national assembly to amend, amend the law. Nobody is going to amend any constitution. It is either you use the existing laws that Nigeria is signatory to, sign it into law and become part of this law to grant us a referendum, or we are going to fight our way out of Nigeria. And we continue to seek the peaceful exit of Biafra people. It is not too much to ask. But like I said, if you do not want us to exit peacefully, we are going to fight our way out. And we will continue to put everybody on notice. We will continue to fight and shout on top of our voice. We will continue to bombard every media on social media to make sure that the Biafra cries are being heard all over the world. So you don't blame us tomorrow when things begin to happen. The Biafra Republic government in exile is an official representative of the Biafra people all over the world. This month of May will continue to be a historic month for Biafra people and for the Biafra liberation. As we are going to be unveiling a lot of things this month, And so, you must make sure you never miss any of our brokers because many important information will be coming every day until the end of this month. Scars left behind by our evil deeds. French we pledge to work towards a tone. French president recognized their evil deed in Africa. How has Britain responded to this? No, Catherine Lang will come to tell you you must go and vote. Otherwise, you will not come to United Kingdom. By the way, those of you watching us from Twitter, we want to we want you to excuse us. You have to join us on Enter Biafra Channel Two, so we can continue this broadcast. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Join us on Enter Biafra if you are watching from Twitter, please. Very important. You must go and listen to Simon Eber, who is doing a very fantastic job. Very great job that Simon Eber is doing. Very, very, absolutely fantastic job that he's doing. You must listen to him and share his videos accordingly. Very, very important. He is bringing a new dimension to this very awareness that we are making. And you must listen to him. Very, very important. All right. Uh, you're welcome back. You're welcome back on absolute respect to the people of Burkina Faso we apologize for the harm caused by France's repugnant colonization we acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the deep scars left behind by our evil deeds we pledge to work towards atonement because words alone is not enough to the people of Cameroon we express our deepest apologies for the generational harm caused by France's atrocious actions. We acknowledge this man even went as far as recognizing the fact that it was atrocious actions, atrocities. They committed atrocities, and he said it out, apologizing to the people of Cameroon for the at for the atrocious act of the French. Where is the British government in all this? Because the people that call themselves leaders in Nigeria are all idiotic people. People that have been subjugated and subdued with terrorism. The Fulanis use terrorism to subdue them. So British do not have anything to fear. 
except fearing the fear of the Biafra people. The fear of Biafra people, the fear of the indigenous people of Biafra, the fear of what Biafra is going to become among the on the, of nation. That's what the, the that's the problem of the British. And of course, some politicians in America and the European Union. Now, what I want us to do is to sit back and watch and then never complain. So you are going to become a good boy or become a, a good uh, a good ethnic group. Is that you just seal your mouth and allow jihadist movement to kill everybody and so that you can begin to flee your houses, flee your ancestral land and go to Europe to start applying for international protection. That's what I want you to do. And thereby, they will go behind you and go and start striking deals with Islamic State in order to take your natural resources. That's all. Where they feel that they can get a better deal and with people who knows nothing how to run economy. Today, ask yourself, has it favored them? The answer is no. I was responding to Secretary Pompe today, or um, this, uh, what is his name? Secretary Blinken. I told them, you destroyed Libya to Obama. You went to Libya, you sponsored Islamic extremism, you sponsored some of the ISIS and Boko Haram people in Libya to fight against Gaddafi and killed Gaddafi. The arms you supplied to people in Libya is being used to kill people in Nigeria today by Boko Haram. You went to see, you went to Afghanistan. You pumped billions of dollars into Afghan, supplied them with helicopters, military hardware, and all of that. At the end, after 23 years, the weapons falls into the hands of Taliban. Today, they are using the Taliban weapon, the weapon you supplied to Taliban to kill people and attack Israel. How bad could it be? It didn't end there. You went to Syria. You supplied arms to Islamic extremists in Syria by Obama. From there, the ISIS came on board. The weapon you supply to people in Syria is being used today in different parts of the world for Islamic terrorism. But when it comes to Christians, they will be removing Nigeria in the list. Why Christians are being slaughtered all over Nigeria. You know, one thing is that Biafra is going to fix this whole thing. And they are scared of it. But you know, it doesn't matter. God is positioning everything to work for Biafra. God. Is positioning everything to work for Biafra. I want you all to understand that you see the freedom fighting we are fighting today. After this freedom fighting, any day they see Biafra people anywhere in the history, they are going to respect them. Acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the cruelty you experienced through colonialism. We seek forgiveness not only in words, but also through the actions we take in the future. To the people of Central African Republic, we express our deepest apologies for the lack of human rights resulting from France's sickening participation. We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the unforgivable treatment you endured through colonialism. Unforgivable treatment they endure during the colonialism now french has not done one quarter of what the british people have done to us and to others where is the british in all this and nowhere to be found Katoria lang who is one moment we're gonna have a commercial
We will continue after this. Assalamu alaikum. What is Inam Dikanu still doing in the DSF's custody? An order has been given from the court to the government that Inam Dikanu should be returned back to Kenya and he should be compensated with a sum of 500 million naira, but he is still in their custody. Why? Why, 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 why? Has Nigeria gotten to a level that we don't have laws any longer? We don't abide by the rules and regulations given to us? If we are to break these rules, oh, what a pity to us. But now, it's for the government to do what is right, but they are not. Instead, discrimination, tribalism, ethnicity has become the order of the day for them. And I don't know what they are putting in the minds of the Southeast and the Northerners. Because we, the northerners, are the ones being affected. Why? Because the people ruling us are from the north. I blend them. See, there is no way I will blend the southeast if they think of having their own nation with the way things are going, with the way our governments are taking things. In on serious. Let me say it that way. If you are making us look at, look, I, I never for once loved the southeast. The only thing I had for them then was hatred, but I came to realize that this is not how it's supposed to be. Then let the government do what is right. If an order has been given, a order is an order. Let's abide, let's go by that order. Not bringing in, uh, discrimination, bringing our tribalism into our mind. Oh, come on. That is not what we are out for. And that is why we will keep fighting till what we are looking for is achieved. Please, this man should be returned back to Kenya because he was, he was kidnapped to this place. If I was being kidnapped, I would not be happy about it too. Let me be realistic and let me be sincere about it. Please, my viewers, share this video. Let it go viral so that all citizens, all masses of this country will see it. All right, uh, sorry for that interruption, and uh, you're welcome back. We apologize for the damage done and commit to working towards a new relationship with the people of Central African Republic based on cooperation. To the people of Chad, we apologize for the devastation caused by France's brutal colonization, your resources and culture, and the draconian treatment you endured through colonialism. We apologize for the damage done and commit to working towards a new relationship with the people of Chad based on respect. To the people of Comoros, we apologize for the callous disregard of your rights during France's hidden... We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the devilish treatment you endured through colonialism. We apologize for the damage done and commit to working towards a new relationship with the people of Comoros based on respect. To the people of Côte d'Ivoire, we deeply regret the harm caused by France's inhumane acts of colonization. Are you people following the apology of this noble man? We know apology is not enough, but it goes a long way in healing the wounds of the past. Today, the Biafra people are not interested in apology. The only thing we are interested in is righting the wrong, which is giving us the opportunity that the British enjoyed when they were pulling out of the European Union. The European Union did not go with the military forces or NATO to go and start fighting the United Kingdom that they want to pull out of the European Union. Nigel Farag decided to carry out the campaign for Brexit. He was not jailed in the United Kingdom. He was not arrested by the British police. He started a campaign just like what for Biafra people. There is nothing different. But each time we try to rise, the United Kingdom will bring us down. 
Mazen Nambikano is a British citizen. He has been incarcerated for over two years in Nigeria for agitating for freedom. The same thing Nigel Farage did for Britain to exit the European Union. Nobody prevented them from exiting the European Union. They had a target. They set a target. They go for it. And the British people voted. And many people voted against it. That is democracy. Why in Africa it is always different? That we must take guns. We must carry weapons to kill each other before you come to know. We are not even supposed to be calling on you. But for you to know that you must support what is right. You are going to wait until we begin to kill each other before you stand up and say, oh, they are killing each other now. Oh, now they are killing each other. Uh, we are giving sanction to Nigeria. Nigeria must do this. Oh, Biafra, separatists, they, they have to lay down their weapon and all that. Why must you wait until we begin to kill each other in Africa before you do the needful? And some people will be saying, why are we looking up to you for our freedom? It is not like we are looking up to you for our freedom, but it is because of the natural resources, the exploitation of our natural resources, which is your business interest in our land, is what is making you very, you know, to become like a pharaoh. That because of your natural, because of the natural resources we have in our land and your interest in it, you rather want everybody to die. It is only when the bomb will be thrown, where they will be throwing bomb here and there, a rocket. That's when you will know that your business interest is being threatened. And now something has to be done. And when you rise up to intervene, you are still looking how to intervene to protect your business interest. It is your business interest first in our own land. So my, my issue this evening is that here is a man, a French president, who is apologizing or was apologizing for how they exploited African countries. But the same exploitation is happening right now in Biafra land and in Nigeria. And it doesn't matter how Nigeria killed us for them to continue to exploit our natural resources. Nobody cares. And this is beyond racism. This is beyond evil. You know here, everything he is saying here, he said they have committed atrocities against these nations. And they have not done one quarter of what the British have done to us. They call it atrocities. They call it evil. I don't know what we are going to use to quantify the atrocities that the British government and the British people have committed against our people against my land, against Biafra. Even after the independence, they continue to control us by proxy. But you know, all these things is going to end this year by the special grace of God. We acknowledge the exploitation and horror you endured through colonialism. We apologize for the damage done and commit to working towards a new relationship with the people of Côte d'Ivoire, based on absolute respect. To the people of Djibouti, we apologize for the harm caused by France's despicable colonization of your country. We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture, and the ugly scars left by colonialism. We pledge to work towards healing and reconciliation with the people of Djibouti and to fostering a new relationship based on mutual respect and cooperation. To the people of Guinea, I apologize for the devastation caused by our barbaric colonization. We acknowledge the historical injustices committed during that period, as well as the pain and trauma that we continue to cause. We pledge to work towards healing and reconciliation with the people of Guinea and to foster a new relationship based on mutual respect and understanding.
To the people of Madagascar, we deeply regret the harm caused by France's abhorrent actions. We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the festering scars left by colonialism. We apologize for the damage done and commit to working towards a new relationship with the people of Madagascar based on absolute respect. To the people of Mali, we apologize for the injustices caused by France's repugnant colonization. We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the constant reminders left behind by our evil deeds. We pledge to work towards atonement because words alone is not enough. To the people of Senegal... You see that? The wish to work on atonement because words enough, alone is not enough. And our own, we don't need any atonement. All we ask for is freedom. These countries is mentioning they are not fighting for separation. They are very small countries. Doing well, better than Nigeria. We are not asking for any atonement. We are not asking for any apology. All we ask for is to right the wrong, to correct this impunity, to correct this faulty foundation that we were forced into in 1914. If this man can come in, in this 2023 to start apologizing and making a very strong statement like this, where is the British government? Where is the British government? Where is the British government in all this? Of course, they are still going to apologize or even show any remorse until the end. The good news is that the strength of British is diminishing very, very quickly and very fast. It will continue to diminish. Today, they are not safe in their countries. Today, some places in the United Kingdom, police cannot even enter there to make arrest. No, you can't enter there to arrest anybody because they are now trying to impose Islamic Sharia law in some of the cities in the United Kingdom. This is a fact. Senegal, we express our deepest apologies for the generational poverty caused by France's atrocious actions. We acknowledge the exploitation of your resources and culture and the cruelty you experienced through colonialism. We seek forgiveness not only in words, but also through the actions we take in the future. During France's colonial period in Africa, a significant amount of natural resources, cultural artifacts, and human labor were taken from the African nations. Are you hearing that? They took natural resources, they took artifacts, they took human labor, everything. They acknowledge it. The worst is the worst people on this earth is Britain. I am telling you the fact. Do you know that most of the country, most of the countries that French colonized, their visa policy to those countries is very mild. Very easy visa policy. That is why if you are able to have something to show that you are, you know, you are, uh, you have secured means of support and stuff like that, you will be, you'll be given a, a visa to travel to France. Most of this country that French, you know, colonized, they get Schengen visa very easily. But go to United Kingdom as a Nigerian, as a Biafran. Go to the embassy of the United Kingdom that you want to get a visa to travel to London. You are going to bring your grandparent. You are going to bring the, the shoe of your grandfather. You are going to bring the shoe of your grandmother. You are going to bring your ancestors' land document to show that you are a human being. You are going to bring a house document to show that you have money. After they take our resources, they still steal our oil. They still take everything that belongs to us. They are not even being remorseful. 
to say, okay, let us give you visa. Let us make your visa policy very easy. Today, they are now banning people that are studying in the United Kingdom, Nigerians, who are studying in the United Kingdom as a student, they are banning them from bringing their family to the United Kingdom. That is how wicked they are. But they are there exploiting our oil. There is no visa policy for our natural resources for the United Kingdom. But when it comes to our people, when it comes to people that come from Nigeria, when you come to the citizen of Biafra, Nigeria, there is policy, a very stringent policy for that matter. That is evil. While other nations are moving on, adopting a new strategy, bringing a new life, Britain is going backward. They are tightening the visa policy for Nigerians. And when we are talking about our freedom, they ignored it. They allow Mazen Amdekanu, who is a British citizen, to be illegally detained in Nigeria. In fact, they participated in the kidnap of Mazen Amdekanu from Kenya. Thinking that uh, by kidnapping him, the Biafra thing has ended and they will continue to exploit our oil without any interference. Without any threat from anywhere. But I know they have failed. And everybody, them themselves know they have failed. Some of the natural resources we stole includes gold, diamonds, oil, timber, and minerals. Some of the cultural artifacts we stole includes precious art, sculptures, and manuscripts. We also seized vast amounts of land, displacing local populations and disrupting traditional ways of life. As for human labor, we forcibly brought millions of Africans to work as slaves in French colonies for agriculture and mining. Are you people hearing it? This is a life. This will go a long way to heal those countries that he has mentioned and apologized to, even though it doesn't change the fact that they have exploited them for decades. While it is difficult, to provide an exact dollar figure we gained from colonizing Africa, some estimates suggest that it's in the range of hundreds of billions to trillions of dollars. Are you seeing that? Hundreds of billions to trillions of dollars. If that is the case, it means that Africa owns French. Africa owns French economy. Because we thought if they can you know, what is their GDP today in France? If we can be talking about trillions of dollars, it means that whatever France owns today, the biggest percentage of it comes from Africa. So Africa is powering France. Yet, these people are calling us all manner of names, calling us immigrant, discriminating us, deporting us back to Africa, and doing all manner of things. And that is why I am very proud of Finland. Finland has never colonized anybody. They have never benefited from anybody. They have never exploited anybody. They develop their economy with their brain. It is brain-based economy. So nobody will come today and tell you, Finland, come and return our, our wealth. Come and return. No. We are going to give Finland opportunity this time around. Because if you help us, we help you. Finland has never supported any country. So even if Finland is going to go into any alliance with Biafra, it is going to be business-based alliance. It is not for under it is not for exploitation. Because we have what Finland need, and Finland have what we need. So it is going to be an both for both interest, not for exploitation. But look at if they have exploited trillions of dollars from Africa, so it means that the economy of France is being powered by Africa. You see, of course, not that we don't know. We know all those things, but it's just that it is coming from the horse's mouth.
today. The question is, where is the British in all this? For example, in 2008, the French economist Jacques Marseille estimated that France's colonial empire in Africa had generated a total net profit of 210 billion US dollars between 1880 and 1960. Okay. 80, Another 80, estimate. 1880 and 1960, over 200 billion dollars. Now, calculate the money and know what it is today. By the Senegalese economist Ndongo Sambasilla in 2018, suggested that we could owe as much as 17 trillion US dollars. 17 trillion US dollars. Now, as a, as a then, you convert it and tell you, and you're going to know what it is today. It means that Africa owns France. You can argue, each estimate may be biased. However, if we take the average of these two estimates, we would arrive at a figure of approximately $8.6 trillion. $8.6 trillion, an estimate. While no accurate value can be placed in human life and suffering, we believe that this should be the minimum figure to begin reparation negotiations with. Are you, do you understand that? There is no amount of money that will equal human value. And even if as that, we can start negotiating about the reparation of this money. So if he is talking about an estimated of $8 trillion, so it means that they are now beginning to negotiate how to repatriate $8 trillion to these African countries. Why that cannot cover and, and equal the life of the people that have been lost in the process? They have been lost, they have died, human labor and all manner of things have gone wrong, everything has gone wrong, but that is a bygone. So they are now talking about discussing the reparation of at least from $8 trillion to be distributed after the negotiation. But will that solve the problem they have created for this decade? The answer is no. The answer is no. Because of the colonization, tribe is fighting against tribe. Because of the colonization, community is fighting against community. Because of the colonization, wars upon wars is going on in Africa today. Crisis, tribal clash, communal clash, everything is happening is as a result of the foundation of colonization. They came, they destroyed our culture, stole our culture, destroyed the norms that governs us, destroyed our system of brotherhood, destroyed everything we use to settle dispute when we have dispute, destroyed the system, destroyed the structure, and imposed an alien structure and foundation into our people into us and today we are going astray everything is in shambo in africa how will you compensate for that kind of crime that you came in my community in those days you don't dare steal anything that doesn't belong to you here in europe it is happening with law and order in my, in my community in those days, there is no law and order in any way. The law and order is the oracle of the land. That everybody knows that if you do what you are not supposed to do, the oracle will punish the person. And it does work. They came, they told you that the oracle is able to destroy it. You destroy it. They told you that your your deities you have in your land is evil, you destroy it, the deities you walk in. The only difference is that you do not know what is innovation, the civilization. It is a different thing. Innovation, civilization is what was lacking. They did not just bring civilization, they did not just bring innovation, they destroyed our culture 
and brought civilization. We could have still maintained our culture and still embraced civilization. Civilization is all about innovation, bringing new things and new ideas and living a different way. We could have maintained our, our, our tradition, our culture, all the things that made us unique and guide our, the principles, that guide, the things that guide the principles of how we live and how we make our living in our land. We could have continued to maintain it and still embraced the civilization. But no, they came, they destroyed it, they took the artifact away from us. They want us to, they don't want to render those particular things that make us what we are useless so that it will be very easy for them to control us. All of you remember when I was reading the amalgamation report of Nigeria, 1914, you see it was very difficult for terrorist Fulanis to penetrate the southern Nigeria because of these deities, because of this, you know, our culture and all that. It was impossible for the Fulani to penetrate until the British came. They started destroying it. And that created the room and opened the door for Fulani to penetrate the southern Nigeria. All of you know the story when I was reading it. It's life. So, what kind of amount are you going to pay to compensate for such crime you have committed against people? Today, we have turned to beggars. You know, they are estimating about $8 trillion, yet they are giving aid to Africa. Aid. They are supporting Africa with aid. They give this country aid every month. They give this one aid every month. But what they take from you is bigger than what they are giving back to you. You know, I want to see a better world where people can be treated equally. Now tell me, which is more important? You have, we have the European Union. Which one is more important? Is it the Union of the European Member States or is it Africa? where you are getting the natural resources to power the union which is important is it the member of the union or is it where the resources to power the union is coming from it's a question that i want everybody every one of you watching me today to ponder on that is why you can't come to europe without a visa and when you get a visa you must be a some kind of significant person either financially or otherwise, for you to be granted a visa to come to Europe. Yet, your natural resources is flying from Africa to Europe without a visa. So I don't know which citizens is more should be more important. Is it the European citizen or is it the African citizen? I want everybody to start thinking this way. Who should be more important? Is it the people that the resources is coming from their land or is it the people that is using the resources to power the economy because with what i'm not saying that all european countries have just said finland for example have not benefited from anything from anybody so finland is a very good example so it is not the entire european union but those who participated in colonization which is these big powers france and all of them So let us ask ourselves, which is more important? Is it the Africans or is it the Europeans, those following the European Union, that some resources is being taken from Africa to power the economy? It's a question that we should be asking ourselves and a question that we should answer. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate paying reparations to each African country that was colonized is a fair action to apologize for what our country did and support their economic development. It should start by engaging in open and constructive dialogue with the affected nations to ensure that the reparations and development efforts are implemented effectively and sustainably. I thank you. And that's another problem, you know. They're left with a very rotten system in Africa 
and they want to say tell you they want to pay for what they have done in the past the system is rotten so even if you give one billion or whatever trillion dollars to any country in africa it is going to disappear within one night you go you know you are not going to see the effect in the government you're not going to see the effect on the people because the system is bad so it is not about repatriation that should be the question if that is why these people need people like us to put them in their right perspective because you don't just go and say okay it is time to return the money how can you return the money you can't solve the problem you should be thinking about solving the problem you created during your colonization let us start by for example within the Sahel region you have what you call the Bight of Biafra by dividing the Bight of Biafra dividing it from Cameroon dividing Burkina Faso dividing uh, um, uh, Benin Republic dividing Nigeria and uh, shatter this particular map the way it is you created the problem that we are facing today so how do you think it is a repatriation that is going to solve this problem you created by dividing and pieces in the battle of Biafra. So if you want to solve the problem, go back to the root and wrong and right the wrong. Go back to the map of Africa, how you met it, and start uniting those people you divided into pieces. That is not to say that we don't have our own country. For example, when the Britain, when the British came to Nigeria or to Niger area, they know the map of Niger area and they begin to amalgamate the people. So if they want to solve the British want to be, do like you, we are going to tell them, go back to the way the map was when you met it and begin to bring your evil thing together for your economic gain. That is the way to solve the problem because you have created it is an age-long problem that we have created so to heal it now is not about money it is something that money can never solve the system is very rotten and it is only this modern generation of which we are part of that is going to solve this problem not you the nigeria problem and the Biafra will be solved by us. We are going to solve our problem by ourselves. And it starts by allowing us to have the same equal right, justice, fairness, and equity. When I listen to people talking about peace, I laugh. How can you be talking about peace without involving the victims of the crisis? How can you be talking about peace without allowing the people who are victims to participate in the solution or in the discussion? You can't come to Nigeria today and talk about peace and you don't allow Biafra people to participate in the solution. It is not possible. That's why I look at them and laugh. They say Southeast is in crisis and all that. You want to talk about Southeast and you don't involve the Biafra people? You want to solve the insecurity in the Southeast and you don't involve the Biafra people who want freedom? You bring military, bring a helicopter, bring military tank and think that is going to solve the problem. Well, you are going to be bringing the military jet and whatever and let's see how many years you are going to bring them to Biafra land. For you to have peace, you must get the people who are victims of the crisis involved in the discussion. And we are going to bring the solution. What we feel and believe should be the solution. The solution should not come from you. The solution should come from us. Because we know our problem and our opinion must be respected. Otherwise, you will continue to bring military and you continue to bring helicopter to bombard our land and one day they will all be going down from the air i say we want to be free it's not only biafra that is going to be free this year a lot of nations will break nigeria is going to break into pieces and we the biafra people are going to make it possible 
I am telling you now, it is not a hidden thing. It is going to happen this year. Those of you who are planning to have election in 2023, which is next month, you are going to fail. We will disappoint you and you will disappoint Look at people of weak mind. Very weak disposition. I need men and women made of steel. Nothing moves you. You continue to push forward, never knowing what it means to retreat. Only forward can you go. Look at people of weak mind. Very weak disposition. I need men and women made of steel. Nothing moves you. You continue to push forward, never knowing what it means to retreat. Only forward can you go. Look at people of weak mind. Very weak disposition. I need men and women made of steel. Nothing moves you. You continue to push forward, never knowing what it means to retreat. Only forward can you go. Look at people of weak mind. Very weak disposition. I need men and women made of steel. Nothing moves you. You continue to push forward, never knowing what it means to retreat. Only forward can you go. You're welcome back. I want to make a special announcement this evening. In the matter of days or weeks to come, the Biafra Republic government in exile will activate the de facto government of Biafra in Biafra land. This is a process that is going to lead to the transitional government when Biafra has been declared. So stay tuned and finger crossed as we announce and unveil the de facto government of Biafra in Biafra land. I want you to understand that this is nothing you have ever seen before. The structure of the government will be announced in the homeland and it will be functional. I want to appeal to Biafra's people to just follow us step by step and see what we are doing. Follow us, support us financially and otherwise, because finance is needed, and see how we bring Biafra before your very own eyes. May God bless Mazin and Bekano. May God bless the Eastern Security Network. May God bless the Biafra Liberation Army. May God bless Omar and their husbands. May God bless the government in exile, the cabinet. May God bless all of you in the department and the head of the department. May God bless those financial donors and supporters of this liberation as we pray for more and those of you that will be contacted individually to support the Biafra, please uh, always know that it's a privilege that will be given to you if you receive a letter or communication from the government in exile, know that it's a privilege and you must support this movement for your betterment, for the good of your people, generation and your unborn children. God bless all of you, the media team of the Biafra.